yep, I still look like Prince Harry. <laughs> as you can see, the hair is still good and ginger. I mean, it doesn't come up as well on the camera because of all these lights on me, but it really is ginger and it's still not fixed, but I'm going in this Sunday and they're gonna redo it for me and fingers crossed, I'm actually gonna be blonde again. Why am I not hopeful? <laughs> So today what I wanted to do was I want to discuss the biggest lies beauty gurus tell you. So the beauty community is not always as it seems. And I mean that in the sense of you can't believe everything you hear. And I'm not saying that beauty gurus lie out, like outright to you. I'm, I mean, I'm sure some of them may tell a porcupine here or there, but I don't mean they're like lying to your faces, lying to the cameras. What I mean is they say little things here, there, and not everything is 100% truthful. And you'll see what I mean. It's very hard to explain, but you'll see what I mean as I go through the video. So I'm going to do my makeup and when you get to a stage of makeup that beauty gurus like to fib about, that's when we'll chat about it. The first things that beauty gurus tend to lie about is primer. First of all, beauty gurus love to convince you that you need primer and you don't. You don't need primer. Your makeup will look just as lovely if you don't have primer on. All primer will do is either fill your pores or maybe make your makeup last a little bit longer, but you do not need a primer. If you want to make your base nice and fresh and kind of tacky and you want to hydrate your skin before you put makeup on, just use a bit of moisturizer and it will work just as well. Another thing that beauty gurus really like to push onto their followers are pore filling primers. And a pore filling primer is fine if you only use it where it is needed. But you will see a lot of beauty gurus putting their pore filling primer literally all over their face. And you don't need that. That is not good for your skin. If I use a pore filling primer, this is literally how I use it. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually going in with the Tarty Beauty Blenderful because even though I absolutely hate it, you know, it's good in the sense that I can use it to dip into things so I don't have to get the undersides of my nails dirty. So, you know, silver linings. But yeah, when I'm using a pore filling primer, I will literally only use it here, 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 and here. The only places where your pores actually need a bit of coverage. You really don't need to smear it around your entire face. Just either sides of your nose, on your chin, and this kind of little space between your eyebrows, because that is where your pores kind of enlarge the most. If you start putting a pore filling primer over your whole face every time you do your makeup, your skin is just going to rebel, it's going to hate you, and you're going to start a whole vicious cycle. Now after I've done the pore filling primer on only the essential areas that it's needed, that is when I will go in all over the face with either a gripping primer, a moisturizing primer, anything other than a pore filling primer. So for example, Milk Hydro Grip, super sticky. Thank God I've actually found a use for this $18 powder puff. And there you go, primed to perfection with the least amount of damage to your skin possible. Now the second thing that beauty gurus like to fib about is not generally in YouTube videos, it's usually on like Instagram videos when you will see the influencers, the gurus, you'll see them applying their foundation to their face literally like this from a bottle to face. Absolutely no makeup artist anywhere will do that ever. It's messy, you have absolutely no control, you have no idea of how much product you're actually putting on, it's wasteful, they just don't do it. Influencers do it to the camera because it looks good, it looks cool, but that isn't, that's, don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. Your makeup and your bank balance will thank you if you just do it the old fashioned way by putting makeup on either your beauty sponge or on the back of your hand and do it that way. I go straight onto the sponge because I feel like if I go onto the back of my hand, then my sponge is just too many steps. You don't need that many steps. Makeup is already enough steps anyway. And just do it the old fashioned way. Just dab, 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 dab. Up. Once you figure you've got it pretty evenly spread out, just blend. There you go, quick and easy. The third thing that beauty gurus lie to you about is when they talk about completely creaseless concealers. Now, I am going to tell you, there is no such thing as a creaseless concealer 
all concealer will crease eventually. If you're like me and you have fine lines under your eyes, it will crease straight away. There's nothing you can do about it because that's just how your face is. If you are someone who has lovely, flawless, beautiful skin, your concealer will go on beautifully. But after a few hours, you know, because you use your face, you move it, you show expressions, you will get creases. And I hate, I can't stand it when beauty gurus are like, oh my God, it's amazing. It didn't crease on me all day. Okay, if, if that's true, then one, you're not moving your face. Two, you have Botox, which is fine, but that is stopping your face from moving and creasing. Or three, I think you're just fibbing. <laughs> I really think you are fibbing because concealer creases, it just does. This is Charlotte Tilbury. It's incredible. It's amazing. I love it. Will it crease on me? Of course it will because it is a liquid product going onto my face that has fine lines. There's no getting around it. There's just not. Does that, that mean that it is not a good concealer? Of course not. It is one of the best, if not the best concealers that I have. Can you see? I mean, already it's creasing because of the fine lines under my eyes. And that's okay because this is a realistic expectation of how your makeup should look. Like, I don't want anyone to be doing their concealer and then start feeling upset, you know, when it, their concealer starts creasing because it happens to everyone. I mean, we all have we all have a face. <laughs> I hope, oh God, I, I hope we all have a face. Jesus, how freaking creepy is that? But like, we all have skin. We all have skin and it's gonna crease. It just is, that's how the face works. If you're someone like me who struggles with your concealer creasing quite quickly, then what I always do is I just make sure I carry a little compact like this, a little mattifying powder compact in my purse with me. I'll take a little poof like this and every now and again, if I go to the ladies room, if I notice that my concealer is creasing, I'll just put a little bit of powder on, dust it under my eye and it smooths everything out. Again. Like, it's not the end of the world, it's really not. See, it's gorgeous. Number four, I want to talk to you about the myth that beauty gurus love to peddle to you, and that is the myth that you need to powder your entire face. You don't. You can do, sometimes I do, if I know I'm going to be out like all day and all night, like if I'm doing a, like a big event or if I'm like out for my birthday, a friend's birthday, if I'm on tour with Derek and this face has to last me all day, I will literally powder my whole face to make sure it lasts. I hate the feeling because it feels heavy and it's not good for your skin, but if it needs must, then needs must. But you do not need to do that. If you're just wearing your makeup, you know, for a day, half a day, just for the evening, you don't need to powder your whole face. It looks great on camera, in real life, not so much. Literally, the only parts of my face that I powder are the parts that I put concealer on. So I will just take like a relatively large fluffy brush, a little bit of pressed powder, and I'll very gently just stipple the powder under my eyes, on my forehead, and on my chin. Literally the only areas that I concealed. Because really, those are the only areas that need it. Beauty guru lie number five, baking. So many beauty gurus make it seem that you need to bake your under eyes with every look that you do. And you really, really, really don't. Okay, so baking was originally a trick used by, and it still is used by drag queens. And what it does is it's where you put a lot of powder under the eyes, bringing it quite up high onto the cheekbones. You leave it there for a few minutes, you dust it off, it brightens, it lightens, it kind of gives you that sculpted effect, but it's for drag queens. And I mean that in the sense that drag queens are on stage, they are performing, they have bright lights hitting them, they're there for hours, they are sweating, they are working so hard. If you are just putting on your makeup to go to work, to go to school, to just go to the shops, to just go on a night out, you don't need to bake. If you are someone who has to work, who has to have makeup on, who has to work for long, long hours, or if you are someone who's gonna be out all day and you need your makeup to last and you just wanna brighten that area, I will show you how to bake, but the the, the non-beauty guru way. I just take some, it's not even baking powder, it's just loose setting powder, and then I take a little sculpting brush. I really lightly coat my brush, so I dipped it in and I'm, tapping off the excess and then just very very gently and very lightly pack that in under the eye and be subtle about it you know don't like don't go for that big streak 
that beauty gurus do because you don't need it. There you go. My under eyes are baked. They are going to last a very long time and I haven't had to pile powder on my face, sit there for 10 minutes, take it off, try and work with my makeup over the top of it because a lot of makeup does not like to work with baking powder. If you put your baking powder on and then you want to try bronze or highlight this area up here, a lot of the time the bronzer, the highlighter, the blush, whatever it is, just won't stick to the skin because you know the idea of baking is to kind of protect that area under the eye. It's not going to want to let you put more product on in any area that the baking powder has touched. If you just do it like this, it's cute, it lasts and it will play nicely with the rest of your makeup. Beauty Guru Lie number six is that contouring will take you one million steps to do. I'm here to tell you, no it doesn't. So to do this, I'm going to take my Tarte Beauty Blenderful because I saw Tarte do this in one of their videos and it looked like so much fun and I had to try it. So <laughs> I mean, it could go terribly wrong and I might have to just go back to my usual way of contouring, but I wanted to try it. And I'm just going to take an Anastasia Beverly Hills bronzer because blue or not, they are interchangeable. I'm just going to kind of fold the Blenderful around my index finger, kind of like a little taco. I'm going to kind of rub the spine of the Blenderful into my bronzer to so find the hollow of your cheekbone or just above. I like to go kind of from this ear and straight down, kind of towards the midsection of my upper lip, so kind of like here to here. Now I'm not going to do the line all the way because <laughs> that would look crazy, but that's kind of the angle that I'm going for. So here we go. Mmm, perfect. Don't worry, it's not going to stay like that. So now what you have to do is go back in with your damp beauty sponge that you use to apply your foundation with and just blend it out and that'll be it. That'll be it. You're done. There isn't like this 15,000 step, you know, like you see people, they do like this darker line, then a slightly lighter line, then a highlight line, and then they do all the dots around their jawline and you don't need to do that. Just line, line, blend. It's so easy. Ready? Let's go. And there you go, contour done. And that was two steps. Apply, blend, done. Beauty guru, porky pie, number seven, eyebrows. Now, a lot of beauty gurus will tell you that when you're doing your eyebrows, it is best to fill them in using delicate individual strokes. And I'm here to tell you, that's stupid. You really don't need that. Eyebrows to me are the most kind of individual part of your makeup routine because everyone likes a different brow. Some people like a sparse brow, some people like a thin brow, some people like a thick brow or you know a fluffy brow or a very kind of heavy brow. I like whatever brow <laughs> I can be bothered to do on the day which is usually a messy brow. You don't need to fall into this trap of believing, you know, beauty gurus that you need a 17,000 step brow routine. I mean, as long as you brush them into place and then fill them in, in whatever your preferred way of doing that is, then you're already winning, okay? There is a reason why beauty gurus go off camera a lot of the time to do their brows and it's because they don't want you to see how long it takes them to do those ridiculous individual individual brow strokes that literally no one can see anyway. I mean, that took me about two minutes and it looks just fine and dandy. Done. Now I'm just going to put on some blush and I'll be back with the next beauty guru myth. Okay, I have applied my blush and I've also primed my eyelid because the next myth is eyeshadows. Now beauty gurus will love to let you think that you need 50,000 eyeshadows on your eye at one time to make a cute eye look and I'm here to tell you really three is enough. So I'm going to show you what I mean and I'm going to be using the Charlotte Tilbury Stars in Your Eyes palette and this is great to use as an example because it comes with four eye looks, love eye eyes, power eyes, happy eyes and confident eyes and they come in sets of three and basically the way it's laid out is the first colour is to prime, the second colour is to enhance and the third colour is to smoke because that's literally all you need when it comes to your eyes. So I'm going to go for the love eyes so I'm going to take a Morphe M173 and load up on this lovely creamy shade and because this is the priming shade you're putting this all over the lid. 
wraps it all over the mobile lid and up to the brow bone. So eyelids are now primed with our first shade. So we are going to go into our second shade, our second shade, <laughs> and we're going to enhance. So I'm going in on a Morphe M433. Coat the brush. Into the crease we go. And when I'm doing the crease, literally all I'm doing is like an arch shape. I'm just following the crease of my eye socket. It's like a perfect semicircle. And can you see how much definition it has given this eye as opposed to this eye? Now also with this shade, what you're going to do is you're just going to bring it in onto the mobile lid, maybe about halfway across, just like so. So now on a smaller blending brush, so for example in Morphe M456, you're going into your smoke shade. So load up the brush, tap off excess, and this is going from the middle of the crease to the outer corner and then circular motions on the outer corner. Smoked, not smoked. And there you go, your eyes are done. It's easy, it's simple, it's three shades done. So now I'm going to put on some mascara and then I'll be back with you again. Oh my god, I got it, I got it, I got the eyeshadow palette and I've got the five glosses. Oh my god, <sighs> I can relax, I can relax. Thank god, okay, so what was I doing? Yes, mascara, Tarte Surfer Curl, amazing, would 100% recommend. But now we are going on to the next Beauty Guru light, which is highlighter. And what I mean by this is that when I see beauty gurus apply their highlighter, I could you not, they apply it to their whole face. They'll put it on the normal areas, you know, the high points of your cheek, your nose, the very tip of your nose, and maybe just your cupid's bow. Then I see them going mental. Like they'll put it their cheek, their nose, their lip, but then I'll see that they kind of put it on this like area above their forehead and then just over the top of their eyebrows. And then they'll literally put it down their whole nose and then on their chin and maybe a bit on their like the high points of their throat and I'm like stop it <laughs> you don't need that much highlight nobody does I mean if you want to get that really kind of like wet pearlescent look get your highlighting brush I'm using a Morphe JS4 get your setting spray spray the brush give it a quick shake just to dry it out a tiny bit get your highlight this one I wasn't too impressed with last time but since I've started using this trick on it I like it more. Coat the brush and just stick to highlighting the key points of the face, so the highest points of your cheekbones, the very tip of your nose, and just over the cupid's bow. And then because you have given it a spray before you applied it, you get that lovely wet beaming, but also kind of natural look. And you don't need to be putting it all down your nose, over your brow, your forehead, your chin, your neck. You don't need to do that because what you've done is, is already enough. You know, sometimes less is more. And I know I'm like the queen of extra, but sometimes less really is more. Okay, let me do my lips and then I'll get right back to you. Whew, I am back. Okay. This this lip combination is a winner. It is a Charlotte Tilbury lip cheat in the shade Iconic Nude, filled in all over the lips, and then the Tarte Sugar Crush Buzzworthy Lip Oil over the top, and it is just like amazing. So Beauty Geary Light number 10 is all to do with the setting spray and this one is about how when beauty gurus set their makeup at the end of their videos and they will literally go mad. <laughs> you don't need a thousand spritzes to set your face in place. Literally a few pumps will do. You want this to last all day? This is all you're gonna need. And that is it. Nothing else. Just a few spritzes across the face and that is it. If you know this has got a lot of a very long time, you might want to give yourself a few extra spritzes. But for the most part, this is enough. If you do too much, you're actually gonna undo some of your hard work. Your makeup is actually gonna start to slip underneath the weight of the liquid. You just want a few spritzes, let it dry, and you are done. Now, our very last Beauty Guru Lie is about foundation lasting all day. I am here to tell you that no matter how hard you try, how hard you wish, 
Believe, hope and pray, and no matter what the little foundation bottle tells you, your makeup will not last you all day. And this is, this isn't, I'm not slagging off the makeup companies. This is just because the amount of oil that your face produces in a day and the amount of sweat, it just breaks through your makeup. I mean, the longest I reckon a foundation could last for is maybe 10 hours before it starts breaking apart, but your makeup just won't last all day. And that's nothing to do with, with you, with how you applied it. It's just everyone. No one's makeup can last 24 hours. It just can't, okay? And you see some beauty gear is like I tried out this 24 hour foundation and it actually works it doesn't it just doesn't and I don't want you to feel bad because you tried it out as well and it didn't work out because it doesn't work because you're being lied to like if you want your foundation to actually last longer though all you need to do is to carry around two simple things in your purse with you the first one is a mattifying powder the second is a little powder poof and what you're going to do if you go to the bathroom during the day if you notice that your makeup started to slip all you're going to do is pop open this bad boy grab your powder poof load it up and then just reset your powder I found the areas that usually need setting first are under the eyes, on the chin, around the sides of the nostrils, and the forehead. And this little trick will actually make your makeup last all day. Rather than just relying on your foundation to last throughout the day, because it won't, just do this. A little bit of mattifying powder, a little powder poof, just apply throughout the day as and when needed, and your makeup will last so much longer. And that is it. Those are my beauty guru lies debunked for you. I'm gonna get some hate for this. That is perfectly fine. I'm a very big girl. I can deal with it. But I just wanted to, I just wanted to talk about it because it really kind of annoys me. And like, I know this video has a bit of a, an angry vibe to it, which I, I don't want it to have, but I, it does like annoy me when you see these beauty gurus talking to their audiences and like lying to their audiences. And sometimes it's not even a lie. Sometimes they're just stretching the truth or they're just kind of like pushing like a, an idea, like an unrealistic idea onto their audience. And it annoys me because then you know you might go away you might try it things might not work out the same and you might get upset with yourself and it's not worth it because it's it's makeup at the end of the day it's there to make you feel better about yourself not worse and that's why I did this because I, I just don't like the thought of people out there especially like younger viewers and like a younger audience you know trying out these tricks they see their favorite influencers doing and being upset that their results aren't the same so I just thought it's important to have a realistic expectation of what our makeup can do for us you know but there we go that is my two cents on the matter and now we are going to move on to more exciting happier things the giveaways are back so in this chunky envelope, I have a selection of luxury makeup samples. I have four of these to give away. There's a complete mishmash of different luxury brands in here. It's a complete lucky dip. It is a mystery bag. You don't know what you're going to get, but I will promise you what's inside is good. I have four of these. I'm going to be giving away to four lucky subscribers. All you have to do to be entered is to like this video, subscribe, ring the bell, and leave me a comment down below telling me about any times where you feel that a beauty influencer or a YouTuber for that matter has kind of lied to you or fibbed to you or led you astray. Do those four things and that is it. You are entered. Like I said, I have four of these to give away. They have some really, really awesome things inside. Can't wait for you to have them so make sure you enter and that is it that is it for this video i am going downstairs now i'm gonna have some ice cream because it is my time of the month all i want to do is eat ice cream and watch netflix and i feel like uh that i i should be allowed to do that i mean it's the law don't argue with me it is the law <laughs> I really hope you liked this video. I hope it was informative. I hope I, <laughs> I hope I wasn't as angry throughout this video as I kind of sounded in my own head. Because <laughs> I don't want to be angry. I just, I'm just very passionate about this. Thank you for hanging out with me. I had fun. I hope you had fun, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.